Good evening. Welcome to our Holy Thursday service this evening. A blessing to have you with us and a special welcome to our visitors as well. Tonight, as we continue our theme of rethinking religion, we focus on this theme, rethinking our appetites. God bless our worship this evening as we begin with the singing of the first hymn. mercy and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight we ponder these words from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 beginning with verse 16. The Apostle Paul writes, Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we shall share, for we all share the one loaf. This is the word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, one pastor tells of a visit he made to one of his shut-in members one day, and he and the shut-in were visiting right along for several minutes until the woman abruptly yet politely told the pastor, Pastor, would you please get to the reason why you visited me today? It wasn't that the woman had a lot of other things to do and so she needed a pastor to leave soon. She was wanting to visit after the reason why he was there. The reason why he was there, the reason she wanted to continue on with the pastor was because of what the pastor brought the word and the sacrament. That's what the woman craved. She longed, she hungered for what the Lord was to give to her. On this Holy Thursday, what are you craving for? What are you hungering for? Tonight I pray and not just tonight, but every day that we crave for communion. Communion with Christ and communion with fellow Christians. 
Now you know that we can have a lot of unhealthy cravings in life, can't we? Maybe some of us enjoy chocolates or jelly beans or other things and it tastes so good and so satisfying at the moment and then we end up feeling so sick because of what we ate. There can be unhealthy cravings. And when you look at the people in Corinth and what the congregation in that city of Corinth were going through, they had unhealthy cravings. There were spiritual temptations that they were facing. If you look a little bit earlier in the text, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul directs the Corinthian congregation to their sin, their sinful craving of idol worship. They thought that they could worship Jesus and eat and drink of the sacrament and then go ahead and also worship idols too. They were sick. They needed help. What a strange participation that was, that you would actually join yourself with devils, join yourself with the things of Satan, and all the while think that you were okay because Jesus will give me his body and blood. What a shame. What a disgrace. When we go to that night, that night called Holy Thursday, Jesus' disciples were sin sick too. They had sick cravings. Some of them were arguing amongst themselves, who is the best of us, Jesus? Tell us who is the best. Others among them were preparing to betray him. Another one was preparing to deny him. There were these arguments. They were sick and on that evening, when they were so sick with these sinful cravings, Jesus comes and invites them to a meal to a meal that was more than the ancient Passover. On that night of the Passover, Jesus was about to institute the most blessed, satisfying meal on this side of heaven. That meal of his body and his blood. Jesus would come with his healing and forgiveness. Dear friends, is that what you crave too? Are you craving all kinds of other things? Is it the distractions in the world? Is it your own sinful pride, your own sinful selfishness that gets in the way and makes you so sick? Some people may think that they are so sin sick that they don't deserve to come to the meal. Not this meal. And they would be right. None of us, none of us deserve what God desires to give. We don't deserve to be in his presence, let alone receive his body and blood. But Jesus comes with his invitation to you too. He says, come and eat. This is my body. Come and drink. This is my blood. He not only tells us what we receive, but also what it does for us. What you are receiving this evening is nothing less than the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. It is not symbolic of his body and blood. It does not represent his body and blood. Jesus calls it his body and blood. This is my body. This is my blood. Making this the most sacred, holy, meal that you will ever eat and drink. And what it does for you is what you need most of all. You need more than just satisfaction for your hunger pains. You need satisfaction for all your sins. You need forgiveness. And Jesus comes with that forgiveness free and full. Paul tells the Corinthians, and Paul tells us too, since you have this participation in the cup, participation in this bread, which is the very body and blood of Christ, 
Why would you ever want to think about participating with the things of the devil? There are so many things that can distract us away from God and what is so vitally and so importantly in our lives that God gives to us freely. We participate in this sacred sacrament, this gift from our God. And Jesus comes to you, you who are hurting, you who are struggling, you who are guilt-ridden, and he comes with the greatest healing that you will ever have, an eternal healing, a complete forgiveness for all your sins, that very body given on the cross, which we will remember tomorrow, that very blood shed upon that cross, that is what Jesus gives you. No one else can, but Jesus gives it to you. We crave this communion, this communion with Christ. But we also crave another communion, this communion with fellow Christians too. Paul says in verse 17 that we are together as one body because we all share a one loaf. That one bread, that one loaf is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus who makes us into this communion of believers. He's given us faith and he strengthens that faith through his word and sacrament. We come from diverse backgrounds, don't we? Some of us have different ethnicities. Some of us are native Hoosiers. Some of us were born out of state, maybe out of country too. But then we come together for this wonderful meal. We are one in Christ and this beautiful gift that he gives to us. It causes us to stop and think for a moment about all our cravings for sinful the sinful flesh. You know what that sometimes leads to? It doesn't lead to a wonderful togetherness. It causes a terrible ripping apart of our relationship with Jesus and also a rippling in our relationships with people around us too. It happens even in churches where people make terrible mistakes sin terribly and cause all kinds of a ripple amongst the congregation. God help us to repent of our sins and to seek the healing where Jesus gives it in his very body and blood. As you go about tonight, I hope you maybe think about those people who cannot be with us. Maybe it's that shut in that would long to be here but can't be with us tonight. Maybe it's that person in the hospital right now who they would love to take communion but because of the type of surgery they just had, they cannot eat or drink hardly anything but they would long to have it. Think about that person who is deployed overseas and they would long to take communion with brothers and sisters and yet they can't get it right now. When we think about those people, doesn't it cause us to also wake up and think about what a treasure we have for the Lord's Supper? That we're together tonight. We're together in Jesus, receiving his body and blood. As you come forward for Jesus' body and blood tonight, may it be a great comfort to you, comfort to you who are maybe mourning, sad, lonely, maybe because you're missing somebody. Maybe you're a little bit angry because that person is no longer with you anymore. Maybe it's just those lonely moments. Jesus comes to give you comfort through this meal because you know what? Your loved one who died in the Lord is right there too right there in that blessed meal. You see, he says this is 
one body. We who are many form one body. And I bet you, you were all thinking that this one body is just the here and now, the believers that are here. No, it's the believers that are above. They're feasting above. One widow once said, I long to go to church to celebrate the Lord's Supper because I am now close with my loved one again. They're feasting, and I'm feasting. This is the church here on earth and in heaven above, worshiping and feasting and celebrating. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Dear friends, what do you crave? I hope by faith we can say it. We crave communion. Communion with Christ. Communion with fellow Christians. May we always cherish that communion above all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard again how our Lord walked the path of suffering which led him to the cross for our salvation. We have also heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and one another. This is the struggle to which we were committed at baptism. God's forgiveness and the power of his spirit to amend our lives continue with us because of his love for us in Jesus our Savior. Within the family of the church, God never wearies of giving peace and new life. In the absolution, we receive forgiveness as from God himself. We should not doubt this absolution, but firmly believe that our sins are thus forgiven before God in heaven, for it comes to us in the name and by the command of our Lord. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other, as Jesus became our servant. In Holy Communion, first instituted on this night, the members of Christ's body participate most intimately in this love remembering our Lord's Last Supper with his disciples, we eat the bread and drink the cup of this meal. 
Together we receive the Lord's gift of his body and blood for the forgiveness and participate in that new covenant that makes us one with him and one another. The Lord's Supper is the promise of the great banquet we will share with all the faithful when our Lord returns, the joyous culmination of our reconciliation with God and each other. As we begin the solemn celebration of our Lord's passion, let us confess our sins to him, receive his absolution, and be reconciled to God and each other in Christian love. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ has forgiven us, has reconciled us to God, and has promised the power to forgive and love one another. Relying on his promise, therefore, be reconciled with one another. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, in our words, and in our actions. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give us your true body and blood as a remembrance of your suffering and death on a cross. Grant us so firmly to believe your words and promise that we may always partake of this sacrament to our eternal good, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. It was Pharaoh who hungered for laborers, slave laborers for Egypt. And it was the Israelites who were starving for salvation. God satisfied their hunger with the Passover. From Exodus chapter 12, beginning with verse 21. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go out at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame, and he will pass over that doorway. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshiped. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. 
At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on the throne, to the firstborn of the prisoner, who was in the dungeon, and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up during the night, and there was loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house without someone dead. The word of the Lord. We invite you to stand for the gospel reading. The gospel this evening, this Holy Thursday evening, comes from St. Mark chapter 14, beginning with verse 12. Judas' appetite led him to betray Jesus because he loved money. Jesus hungered for the salvation of his people and gave them the most blessed supper. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready, make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When, the ev when evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Sinless lamb and fallen creature, one 
last Pasco meal to eat, one last lesson as their teacher, washing your disciples' feet. Was there that who could give them, but never be outspent? What great gift that would outlive them? What must Show me down the world you love me, know me at Do this in remembrance of me, eat this body, drink this blood. One in faith, in love united, all one body, you the when we meet by you invited with us as you said with one another in a unity sublime see in us your sister brother one in every One day all the church will capture that bright vision glorious and your saints will know the rapture that your heart desired for us. When the long for peace and union of the greatest and the Blessed communion in your never-ending feast. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God, pictured in the ancient Passover feast, now giving your own body and pouring out your own blood in holy communion, just as the Passover lambs assured the Israelites of God's promise to deliver them from death. Strengthen our belief that the bread is your real body and the wine is your real blood given to us for our forgiveness, life, and salvation. Prepare us to receive this sacrament, remembering your death and repenting of our sins. Unite us by our oneness of faith throughout this congregation and our synod, and love us to the end, that we may love others as you have loved us. We rejoice in our fellow believers who have been instructed in your word and confirmed in the Lutheran faith, who are now ready to receive Holy Communion. Equip them with every spiritual blessing for doing your will. We pray for those absent from the sacrament because of their own neglect. Call them in your mercy to return and renew their faith. Keep in your care those unable to receive the sacrament often because they are homebound, hospitalized, imprisoned, serving in the military, or otherwise separated from the fellowship of believers. Encourage them so that they do not lose hope. Be gracious to us all and nourish us with this feast that we remain faithful unto death and become partakers of the wedding feast of the Lamb. Amen.
Please stand. Lord Jesus, our thanks to you shall ever be that you have died to set us free, made righteous through your precious blood. We now are reconciled to God, our lives to deeds of love be given, to our neighbors here and you in heaven. Let nothing in us nor what we own serve any master but you alone. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give to receive thanks and praise from all people. You created the world and all who live in it, and in your mercy you saved us. We give thanks to you for the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Though in very nature God, he took the nature of a servant and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin and redeemed us from its curse and penalty. He rescued us from the terrors of death and restored eternal life with you. He conquered our enemies and gained for us the kingdom of grace and glory. Bless us as we receive your son's body and blood and lead us to remember his suffering, death, and resurrection. Forgive our sins and fill us with the hope of new life in heaven. Hear our praise and receive our thanks as we worship you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Oh, Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Oh, Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
seated. The feast of the Lord's Supper is now prepared. We invite all communicant members to come forward to receive Jesus' body and blood. We are honored to have our guests with us this evening, and we ask that you would please speak with the pastor prior to communing with us, and we would be honored to share with you how to become a member as well. God bless our celebration of his sacrament. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given over to death for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus our Savior. Depart in his peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given over to death for all of our sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given over to death for all of your sins. Take and eat.
now this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus our Savior. Depart in his peace. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Heavenly Father, your son was betrayed by Judas, abandoned by his disciples, and arrested by his enemies to fulfill your plan of salvation. Forgive us when we abandon you by our sin and strengthen us through your word and through the sacrament of your son's body and blood that we may always cling in faith to your gospel promises in every adversity through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Your wrath 
has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. You have taken from me friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. What wondrous love is this, O my soul? Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, Oh, dear. 